Welcome there, boys and girls, for our next installment of Flippin' the Flip Class. Sorry that you don't get an awesome uh, adjunct professor or some college, just little old me. We're going to talk about organelle groups today. And we're just going to sort of clump them into the different associative groups that you should be thinking about. And I'm just going to talk about one of those groups, keep it nice and easy. So the groups are uh, protein synthesis and tracking, uh, trafficking, sorry, trafficking, protein synthesis and trafficking. And then we also have metabolism. We're going to discuss this one in our next unit a lot, so we're just going to gloss over it later. Uh, defense, that'll be in the next video. There's some really cool uh, organelles that play a big role in cellular defense, which is sweet. And then there's also replication. This one we're definitely going to hit later. We're going to crush this all over the place when we do genetics and in a later unit, uh, cell cycle. So just some of the ones to keep in mind. Now, there are many, many more, but these are the main groups that I care about. So you should take this time to just write down the groups and keep in mind that today we're talking about the protein synthesis group. We're going to look at protein synthesis and trafficking, that is moving them around and stuff. So there are several organelles involved. Remember there's a nucleus that actually contains the DNA that holds the information so that way we know, you know, what to make the proteins, you know, how to make them. Uh, the ribosomes. Ribosomes are very important. Remember, bacteria or prokaryotes have ribosomes too still, and those are how we assemble our proteins. So the DNA actually contains the instructions. Bacteria not having the nucleus, they skip the whole nucleus phase. They go right for the DNA, hooking up with the ribosomes. So the ribosomes are what's going to make them. There's also the endoplasmic reticulum, which plays a big role, like you already know, in internal transport trafficking around the inside of the cell. There's the Golgi, the Golgi mixture, capital G for Dr. Golgi. The Golgi plays a big role in transporting things outside the cell, so we're going to look at that one for exporting proteins. And the vesicles, which again you should be thinking of as like a briefcase or a book bag, that's your vesicle. What's really cool is that your vesicles, your Golgi, your ER, and your nucleus are all made out of the same membrane, which is why bacteria can't have them because they don't have the double membrane technology. So all these are made out of the same kind of plasma membrane that we're going to learn about a little bit later in the unit. And then there's also the cytoskeleton, which is actually used sort of like a railroad to move the vesicles and other materials around the inside of the cell. The ER is sort of like a big conveyor belt. The Golgi you can think of like UPS, packages things, and the cytoskeleton is like a railway to move things around. In addition to that, there's also the plasma membrane, and that's the cell membrane, that double membrane, and so that is there for border control. The lysosome also plays a big role because the lysosome is going to have to be all destroying things that get in the way. This, like that. This thing is very in the way. There, yeah, that's better. Put it up there in the corner. That's real nice. So the lysosome also plays a major role in destruction and recycling. Remember, anytime we're moving things around, we're going to have to build, unbuild, digest, recycle any of our materials. So that's where the lysosome comes in a big recycler, the lysosome. Then we have our next slide. This is a really fun little picture that just sort of compares your cell to a city. And you see, you know, you've got the nucleus, that's the blueprints, that'd be the DNA right there. And the DNA gets also turned into this stuff called mRNA. You should know that mRNA, that's very important for knowing mRNA. That would be the, uh, the copies right here. So you have the DNA is the original that stays in the nucleus gets turned into mRNA. The RNA there is for a ribonucleic acid. The DNA is for deoxyribonucleic acid. It's pretty much like DNA, only single-stranded. We'll talk more about this in depth later, but for now you just need to know that it's the single-stranded version. And that gets carried outside the nucleus onto the rough ER. The rough ER again being covered with the ribosomes. And that's sort of like here we have, this is the endoplasmic reticulum, our conveyor belt. And then you can see right here, uh, this gentleman would be representing our ribosome because he's actually putting together the building blocks, the amino acids, the components that make up your protein. So this is actually assembling the proteins. And what's really cool is you can think of the ribosome like a little factory. They're on this conveyor belt and they're actually moving. So each one of these dots in here, if we zoom on in to here, you can actually see each one of these dots here. 
is actually a ribosome that's doing this and the ribosomes are moving. It's not moving the proteins, it's moving the worker along the conveyor belt, which is really kind of cool. And then when that's done, it'll go over to the Golgi. Here's our Golgi apparatus, the box labeled export. That's an example of our vesicle. So we have the vesicle that we're going to export the thing in, the thing being the protein. The vesicle goes along here on the roadway, which is the cytoskeleton, over to the border control, which is the plasma membrane. So you have down here, you have the nucleus. Remember, the nucleus has our instructions. The nucleus sends the instructions in the form of mRNA. It's the messenger RNA, sends the messenger out here to the ribosomes. You can see all the little ribosomes just all over the rough ER here. Here's a few that are loose. Maybe they'll escape. Maybe not. Doesn't matter. Anyway, so we have all these ribosomes covering the uh, rough ER. They're making proteins, and when they're done, the contents of the proteins are put into this vesicle. The technical term here is actually blebbing, which is hilarious. So literally, the organelle here blebs off a piece of itself. It's like folding up like an animal, like a balloon animal, and it actually pops this part of it just comes off and encapsulates the protein. It travels on the cytoskeleton. It's like a train tracks over here to the Golgi. Here's our Golgi. It's made of the same kind of membrane. I can't stress that enough. The Golgi here is the same membrane as the ER, as the nucleus, as the plasma membrane up here. And it actually takes the vesicle into itself. When the vesicle comes into it, it actually becomes a part of the organelle. So here the vesicle now is a part of it. It sends it through and does all kinds of crazy Golgi type things to it that you will learn about way later in your biological career. But at the end you can actually see it happening right here. The Golgi blebs off this beautiful vesicle full of the protein that's been modified. It's ready for export. You'll see they're calling it the secretory vesicle because not that it's a secretary but it's going to secrete it like loop it out. The secretory vesicle actually comes over to the plasma membrane. And because this and this are made out of the same stuff, they're both made out of that same double membrane, the vesicle here can actually fuse up with the cell membrane, export the protein, there it is being exported outside of the cell, and then the job is done. Now you're probably wondering, at some point, we're going to run out of material back here. Like, I mean, look, look at this. If the, if the ER here gets rid of all this material to the Golgi, the Golgi gets from the ER, so it's okay, but then the cell membrane can become huge. From time to time, there may be incoming vesicles or things that need to be transferred between the ER and the uh, Golgi, for example, lipids. And a lot of this breakdown of these things actually comes into play with the lysosomes. So our lysosomes are not just for breaking things down, but you can see over here we actually have a lysosome forming. It attaches to the vesicle and it's for breaking down, it's for digesting. It's got these really cool, nasty digestive enzymes. Uh, you like your stomach acid digests things. It's just going to rip them to shreds, send the materials back down to this area where we need them. So that right there in a nutshell, that is the internal uh, membrane system. Here's another one, just to give you another perspective. Again, just real fast to repeat myself so you can skip this part if you're like, no, no, I got it, I'm good. The vesicle travels from the rough ER to the Golgi, from where the Golgi does Golgi things, travels from the Golgi, it blebs off down here, and it travels from the Golgi to the cell membrane, where it actually becomes a part of the cell membrane, expelling the protein out into the extracellular space, that's the space outside the cell. Don't forget the role of the cytoskeleton, not only is it around here, for giving the cell its shape, but in addition to that, it actually can break down, reform in different places, and it's actually the highway upon which those vesicles are moving. So cytoskeleton is not just for support, it's also for transporting the vesicles around the cell, so it's like moving portable book bags, which is really, really cool. So that, in a nutshell, boys and girls, that is the internal membrane transport system. We're talking about proteins that get made on the ribosome here and they get sent out of the cell. Later on we'll talk about more of our little CD. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to moodle it up. Great job everybody.